Hi, I'm Jeff with Clearly Coastal, and I'm just wanting to pass along some of the information I learned the last two summers boating the Inside Passage in this video. So we did this trip over two summers, and uh, we live in Prince Rupert, so we're right in the geographic middle of the Inside Passage. So the summer of 2022, we traveled from Prince Rupert up to Juneau, Alaska in our Ranger Tug R23. And then this last year, in uh, 2023, we traveled from Prince Rupert down to Vancouver Island and back in our Hughescraft 270, the one I'm sitting in now. So I'm gonna do this video in a uh, southerly to north uh, pattern so that uh, it's you know makes sense it's I'm not bouncing all over the place and uh, you can follow along in the routes that we took so by no means am I uh, an expert in boating or any marine related things but I do want to share the things I did learn and pass those on so hopefully that you can make your trip planning a little bit smoother for yourself because I know when I was looking into planning our trip back in 2022 I wanted to gather as much knowledge as I could uh, to try and make the trip as you know as much fun as safe as possible and uh, just overall a great experience uh, so some things to keep in mind uh, up in British Columbia and Alaska the tides up here are very large here in Prince Rupert we often see 20 foot plus uh, tide changes so you know we're moving about four feet every hour and with those tides come strong currents so definitely need to be checking your tide tables and uh, know where the currents run stronger than other spots also weather weather is definitely a thing you want to plan for up this way uh, it can change quickly it can get nasty so uh, at the end of the video I'm gonna go through a couple of the things I use for going through my weather and planning and preparing for my trips one of the other things to keep in mind is how massive the coast of British Columbia is as the crow flies Victoria to Stewart is about 900 kilometers but on the coastline with all the islands and the inlets and everything that we have along the coast in BC, there's over 25,000 kilometers of coastline here in British Columbia. So it's absolutely massive. And uh, hopefully that kind of puts into perspective how much it is and how much you can see. Um, it's really endless, the amount of exploring that a person can do and the things that you can see along our coastline and up into Alaska as well. I don't know their coastline distances, but uh, it's a huge place as well. And uh, just as beautiful, uh, really enjoyed my time up there. So when we went down to Vancouver Island, we took a uh, different route south than we did north. We wanted to cover as much of the coastline as we could, and that was the reason we did that. So I'm gonna do it all, like I said previously, from south to north, and uh, I'll start with one route, and then I'll do the other one, just so I'm not bouncing back and forth. So the most southerly point we went to with a boat on the Vancouver Island was Maple Bay. Uh, Maple Bay uh, Marina, was a really good marina that we stayed at for about uh, five days. Uh, we rented a car while we were there. The marina itself, there's a restaurant on site, washrooms of showers, a little gift store, bakery, uh, coffee shop. Uh, they have a fuel dock there and Wi-Fi available as well. So lots of really good services and uh, super close to Duncan. Uh, we were able to grab a cab, get the car for the rental and from there we explored Vancouver Island. We went to Victoria for a day. Uh, there we checked out the Bouchard Gardens, uh, world famous flower garden. Um, the kids and my wife really enjoyed that time there. Uh, we hit up some really cool shops, some good, great restaurants, toured the waterfront area and and uh, had a really good time in Victoria. We also went up to Parksville, checked out places like Goats on the Roof, uh, went to a country music concert as well while we were there. There was a, a country music fest going on. So yeah, the Vancouver Island has endless amounts of activities that a person can do. It just depends how much time you want to spend there. So when we left Maple Bay, we traveled up from there up to Campbell River. That's about 104 nautical miles. And uh, on the way there, we stopped at Hornby Island. So. Leaving Maple Bay, uh, you go up past Nanaimo, uh, Dodds Narrows is one of the places to keep in mind. The current runs pretty strong in there. Um, it also gets pretty narrow, as the narrows indicates. So, so you want to give your security announcements to make sure the, it's clear for you to come through. Um, slower vessels, you're going to want to watch the tides because uh, the currents can get strong enough in there for you that you might want to time it with slack tide. Uh, yeah, so you get through there, you go up to Nanaimo, and Nanaimo is a pretty major center on Vancouver Island, so there's a lot of traffic there. Uh, there's BC ferries, there's a lot of tugs and barges, uh, and you know, so a lot of pleasure craft. So it's a very busy area in the water, so you definitely want to pay attention going through there. Everything is well marked though, and uh, so you just pay attention and you'll be alright. Uh, so then from there, we went to Hornby Island. 
and Hornby was absolutely gorgeous. Uh, we stopped in for lunch there. It was unfortunately all the time we had, but uh, we anchored just out from the beach uh, with there's a bunch of other vessels that were anchored out that way. Really easy spot to anchor, nice soft sandy bottom. We dug in nice and quick, hopped in the dinghy, went to shore and uh, from there we were able to uh, grab some lunch. There, it's a short walk from the beach uh, to a little town site and uh, there's shops and restaurants all through there. Cute little place and uh, we really enjoyed our short little stay there. Uh, from there we finished off the trip up to Campbell River that day. Uh, Campbell River, really big center as well for the northern end of the island. Um, has a lot of the amenities, great marina there we stopped at. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that the marina there, the currents do run pretty strong at times and we were there one of those times so it made our docking experience a little bit interesting. Uh, the boat was uh, moving around pretty good but we had some help getting in there. Uh, it was a really tight slip but uh, we did get in. Just something to keep in mind though. Uh, the really good fuel dock there in Campbell River as well. Staff helping out all the time uh, with boats coming alongside so making your experience as best possible. While in Campbell River, we stayed with some friends. Uh, we spent the night at their place. They showed us around town. Um, they took us to a really cool spot where we were able to swim in a river. And uh, that was really beautiful. Very clean, crisp water is unreal. Uh, the next day, they took us on a really cool hike where we got to see some pretty cool waterfalls. And uh, the difficulty on the hike is pretty easy overall. Uh, there was a decent amount of stairs. So if those are the things that uh, might inhibit you, just to keep in mind, but not a lot of hills. So really well marked paths as well and uh, definitely worth checking out if you're able to see that. Yeah, and then Campbell River, like I said, it has all the amenities you need. Um, it's definitely a spot you could spend a few days exploring as well. And uh, yeah, it's just a really beautiful spot. Some good salmon fishing there. They, they are the self-proclaimed salmon fishing capital of the world, probably like a few other communities, but uh, definitely some good fishing in that area as well. So something to keep in mind if that's something you like to do. So from Campbell River, uh, the next leg we did on the way north was going to Port Hardy. So that was a 102 nautical mile run. So leaving Campbell River, one of the things you want to keep in mind is checking the tides at Seymour Narrows. The currents through Seymour travel really strong. Um, and we definitely, when we went through, uh, we had about a seven or eight knot decrease in speed as we were heading into the tide. Uh, so again, slower vessels are definitely going to want to check the uh, tides with uh, Seymour and uh, hit slack tide accordingly. It used to be much more dangerous bef back before Ripple Rock was destroyed. Uh, the Canadian government and the British Columbia government back uh, in the 50s or 60s, I believe it was, blew up this huge rock in Seymour Narrows. Um, prior to this rock being blown up, uh, there was over 100 people that died at Seymour Narrows. Uh, it's still a dangerous place, but it's uh, definitely a lot safer than it used to be. Uh, without that rock there, it slowed the current a little bit and made it a little better for passage. So from there, we went up into the Johnson Strait. Uh, the Johnson Strait, it was a great uh, day of cruising through there. We had uh, flat water. Um, the weather was a little cloudy and rainy, but like I say, there was a very little wind. So the water itself was great, but I have read that people online who, uh, depending on which way the winds and tides are going, can get a pretty steady chop through there. Uh, again, this is part of, basically part of the inside passage, uh, at least people funneling up into it. And uh, so you're gonna get a lot of cruise ships, more tugs and barges uh, carrying various things. Some even coming from Alaska or going to Alaska. Also a lot of other pleasure craft going through the area. Uh, it's a very popular area, boating area obviously. Um, and a lot of people you'll see through here are also gonna be doing the inside passage. So definitely a steady flow of traffic through the area. So Port Hardy is the most northerly uh, town on Vancouver Island and it is your last stop before heading north into the Inside Passage uh, after crossing Queen Charlotte Strait. Uh, Port Hardy itself had a lot of great amenities we found. Uh, there's a free dock, uh, the Fisherman's Dock I believe it was called, that uh, you're able to tie up to and it's free of charge but it also has shore power available, uh, which was incredible to have that as a surprise. So didn't expect that at a dock that you can go uh, tie up for free. Also, the dock is nice and centrally located. Not that Port Hardy is huge, but right off the dock there, there was uh, public washrooms that were open till 11 p.m. if I remember correctly. And there was a few little restaurants close by and then a little further walk, there was a grocery store and that. So Port Hardy itself also has 
has a fuel dock. Uh, it was closed when we got there, so keep in mind what their hours are if that's something you're gonna need. And uh, there's other uh, hotels and restaurants throughout the town there. So it has a lot of the things that you would need along your stay, or if you wanted to stop there for a few days and you know wait out the weather in the Queen Charlotte Strait if it was nasty or anything like that. So just a good stopping point if uh, you need as well. So that was the route we took when we uh, went from the southern end of Vancouver Island and started making our way back home to Prince Rupert. The route we took on the way down, we were closer to the mainland side for the most part because uh, there's a lot of things we wanted to see on over there as well. So I'll go through that route now and we're going to start back in Maple Bay and work our way in reverse order of what we did but again south to north. So, so from Maple Bay we're going to go to the Back Eddy Marina uh, which is just north of Seychelles. Uh, it's on the north east corner I guess it would be of the peninsula there uh, by Skookumchuck Narrows. So that was a 75 nautical mile run uh, from Maple Bay to Back Eddy. We crossed the Strait of Georgia which is a fairly uh, you know decent sized body of water uh, so the weather you know again you want to keep an eye on that. We had another day of, uh, of smooth cruising and a beautiful bluebird day as well so it made the crossing very enjoyable. Um, Getting up into there was pretty straightforward. Um, Back Eddy Marina had uh, really good docks. They have uh, showers and bathrooms available as well. We had supper at the restaurant there when the food was good. And we uh, also went for a walk to Skookumchuck Narrows. It was about a five kilometer walk each way from the resort. Uh, fairly level for the most part. Uh, you gotta walk along the road for a bit and then you get to a trailhead and the trail is nice and wide, very well maintained. Uh, Skookum Truck Narrows are very famous for how fast the currents flow through there. So it was definitely something we wanted to check out and I would recommend anybody to check it out. It was absolutely incredible to see. We were there on a bigger tide and the power was absolutely incredible of the water and how fast it was moving. Uh, just really puts into perspective how powerful water really is. And uh, like I say, it's definitely something you're going to want to check out if you're in that area. Um, and there's lots of people watching that night. The odd time we've heard of people even, I've seen video as well of people going in their whitewater kayaks and uh, riding the surf in there. So there definitely some pretty big waves that you can see in this video here. So continuing to work our way back, uh, leaving back Eddy, we're gonna go back up into Princess Louisa Inlet and then over to Powell River. So that was 91 nautical miles in length. Now, Princess Louisa Inlet and Malibu Narrows, uh, absolutely beautiful chatterbox falls at the end is what we were going to see but the whole journey up in there was absolutely stunning malibu rapids is uh, definitely another place you need to be checking the tides for slower vessels you're also going to be needing to announce your security coming and going uh, there's definitely only room for probably one vessel at a time in or out uh, the when we went through, we slowed down at least eight knots going into the uh, current. Uh, it was a lot of fun with my boat having the 400 horse and powering through, but slower vessels, there's no way you're going to get through without uh, waiting for slack or for the current to slow down at least. It was a very busy spot. Uh, on our way up into it, we passed at least 20 vessels that were uh, cruising up slowly trying to tie them slack tide and uh, when we got to the dock we had lots of space but it definitely could fill up fast thankfully though the dock is really big so they can fit a lot of vessels into there once we got in there um, the waterfalls and chatterbox falls it's absolutely gorgeous it's a short little hike very easy hike um, and definitely worth checking out absolutely massive waterfall and uh, again really crystal clear water we swam in the ocean there as well for a bit uh, it was decently warm in there not too bad at all and uh, we just really enjoyed our time there we all said that we'd love to go back and spend a night or two on the boat exploring in that area it was just absolutely stunning uh, one thing i didn't mention once you get past malibu rapids going into princess louisa it's a no wake zone um, so you're supposed to keep your speed down uh, and it's only about a if I remember correctly, about a five kilometer run in from the narrows up to the waterfall. So really not too far to slow your speed down. On the way out, it was beautiful. So we uh, made some lunch on the back deck and just uh, took in the scenery as we you know, slowly cruised back out to the rapids. So definitely make your uh, way through there in the area. It's a must see on, in uh, my opinion. And 
yeah it's just a gem of the coast so go in and there check it out so from there to powell river powell river pretty decent size uh, center just north of the sunshine coast we stayed at beach garden marina uh, that marina has about 55 slips pretty good sizes i have a fuel dock right there uh, so we topped up with our fuel there uh, there's a hotel with restaurant that you have access to as well uh, and they have showers and bathrooms available for guests of the marina so really good facilities there and uh, we were able to get a vehicle from friends of ours, and so we went and explored Palo River a little bit, hit up a really awesome ice cream shop and a brewery, and uh, definitely had a great time and a beautiful sunset along the coast there. So we definitely enjoyed our short little stay in Palo River. Palo River, we were, went back to Dent Island, but we also, along the way in between there, uh, explored Desolation Sound. So this total leg was 117 nautical miles. Uh, Desolation Sound, we had been told many awesome things about it. The day we went through there, it was raining, so we didn't spend too much time there. But we had been told how warm the waters were in Desolation Sound, so we had to check it out for ourselves, and they were warm. So coming from Prince Rupert, where our water is really frigid and not too many people go swimming, the odd person does, um, to Desolation Sound, it was like going into a bathtub. The water was so warm, we all jumped in and took a little swim just to say we did and experience it. And uh, we definitely had a great time with that. Um, we also tried to stop in at Refuge Cove, but however, with the rain and the weather that day, uh, it was really busy. I'm guessing people are just trying to get out of the weather. Uh, so we were unfortunately not able to find any space to dock and all the mooring boys were also full. So we weren't able to stop in there, but from what I've been told and researched myself, it seems like a really cool spot. And if you're able to get in there, I would definitely recommend it. There's some neat little shops, a grocery store, and uh, yeah, everyone says it's a must stop. So if we get back that way, we'll definitely check it out, but I recommend that you check it out as well. So from there up into Dent, Dent Island, sorry, uh, we stayed at the Dent Island Resort. Um, you go through a few rapids on the way up there. Nothing as strong as like Malibu um, or Seymour like that, but some definitely ones that uh, slower vessels are going to want to keep an eye out for. Um, and yeah, we felt the boat getting pushed around a little bit, but like I say, nothing too bad in there. Um, but yeah, Dent Island Resort itself is... Uh, it's a five-star resort it, the dock itself is absolutely amazing um, one thing to keep in mind there as well uh, there's a rapids basically running right beside the dock and you're gonna want to keep that in mind when you're coming in ask for the get on the radio and ask staff for help if you feel you need it uh, staff were super awesome helping us out get in there um, they're also great for getting whatever you wanted there. Uh, they would get you ice if you wanted, if there's anything they could plan or book. You could do fishing charters through there. They have jet boat tours of uh, the rapids, the Dent Island Rapids, or sorry, Dent Rapids. And uh, so there's definitely lots of services there. There's a restaurant we didn't eat at, but uh, looked like the food was delicious. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's also a hot tub that we enjoyed there for all, all guests. And it was absolutely beautiful overlooking the ocean from the hot tub as the sun was going down. Uh, some really good hikes as well in the area. The bathroom facilities and shower facilities were absolutely amazing as well in there. It's a, a pricier place to stay at compared to most marinas, but you definitely get what you pay for with this place. And we would definitely love to stay there again. So it was definitely a, worthwhile trip and you definitely can't go wrong with your stay at Dent Island. So from Dent Island we made our way to Blind Channel Resort. This was a really short run on this day, it was only 15 nautical miles, but definitely a really cool thing to see there. So the Dent Island Rapids uh, are extremely fast and you're again needing to check the tide tables for slower vessels. Uh, we went through there and it was a experience of a lifetime we had uh, probably eight nine knots pushing us around there's also a whirlpool there uh, known as devil's hole so if you YouTube that you'll see how massive it can get we uh, didn't see it too big the day we went through but there was tons of whirlpools fo forming all around and just a again massive massive uh, tidal area and uh, you definitely got pushed around pretty decently in there and if you don't have the power to get through it you're definitely going to want to avoid that so uh, something to keep in mind in that area uh, getting into blind channel resort 
absolutely stunning resort as well. It uh, has a really large dock. Uh, gas and diesel are available there as well at the dock. Um, the resort itself has a restaurant, uh, has a general store that has a liquor store inside of it as well. Uh, for the boats, there's a uh, bathroom facilities available. Uh, they also have cabins people can stay at and rent. Now there's some pretty cool hikes in that area as well. Uh, we hiked to a tree that was 900 years old and that was absolutely incredible to see. Just again, more nature and how amazing it is. Uh, one of the best things there though was the cinnamon buns that you make each morning. Uh, we didn't know about it until we were walking by in the morning and saw some other people eating them. So we decided, oh, we better try these out. And my goodness, I would go back just for the cinnamon buns. So, Try the cinnamon ones when you're at Blind Channel Resort. You won't regret it. So leaving Blind Channel, we made our way to Lagoon Cove Marina, which is on East Car Carcroft Island. Uh, Lagoon Cove Marina it was a really beautiful spot. We are in the Broughtons at this point. Uh, not quite as busy as the Desolation Sound area. Definitely feel like you're more in nature there. Um, less busy boat-wise and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, a really beautiful, relaxing spot there. Now, the Lagoon Cove Marina itself, uh, the facilities are really good. Really like the dock there. Um, the staff was very helpful and getting us all settled in. And then one thing that uh, that marina does, which was neat as well, is every afternoon they offer a potluck and all the boaters who are there are invited to bring a dish up and just share stories and visit with other boaters. And the cool thing as well is the marina brings in uh, fresh prawns that they've caught for everybody. So everybody can partake on those. Uh, unfortunately, we just missed out on this when we came into there. Uh, we just tied up a little bit too late and they were just wrapping up, but it looked like everybody was having a good time. Uh, there they have some hiking trails as well. There's bathroom facilities, uh, showers were available uh, just uh, for a small fee, um, so pretty reasonable though. Uh, they also offered Wi-Fi services there. We really enjoyed our short stay there as well and uh, it was a nice location. So Lagoon Cove, we're gonna go uh, back to Port McNeil. Uh, that was a 30 nautical miles. And Port McNeil, we had just stopped in there for lunch to grab a quick bite to eat. And we stopped at Devil's Bath Brewery. Uh, they make wood-fired pizzas there. And the pizza was absolutely delicious. We all really liked that. Um, there was a free community dock we were able to tie up to for free. I think it was about two hours or so you're allowed to. Uh, and if you need to be a bit longer, they said just to call the Harbor Master and let him know you might be a bit longer. So that was really convenient as well. Uh, great fuel dock that we use there. Um, nice and big. Staff was helpful getting us uh, all tied up and uh, all our fuel there. So Port McNeil, uh, a little smaller than Port Hardy, but still has a is a great place to uh, you know get services, food, whatever you might be looking for. Uh, also Telegraph Cove is just south of there. So we had just poked our nose into Telegraph Cove. Uh, didn't really have time to stop there. But would definitely like to check it out though again in the future. It looked like a pretty cool little touristy spot to check out. Okay, so now we've covered both our routes, north and south on our Vancouver Island leg, um, up to the north end of Vancouver Island. So this is where we intersect at Port Hardy and we can start making our way north towards Prince Rupert. So from Port Hardy, we went to Shearwater and that's 177 nautical miles. So one of the things you want to keep in mind when leaving Port Hardy um, is Queen Charlotte Strait. That was our biggest open water crossing on this trip and it's known to get pretty nasty when the weather uh, doesn't want to cooperate with your plans. So you're definitely going to want to keep an eye on the weather with there, that area as it gets really nasty. We were fortunate that both directions we uh, had great weather um, overall the way south uh, it was fairly flat a little bit of rain but overall not bad uh, the way north we had some six to seven foot rollers but they were spread out far enough that you were just able to roll up and down them and you weren't getting slammed on them so uh, it was definitely easy crossing for us in that but uh, it can get a lo lot uglier so keep your eye on on the weather and if you need to you know hang out for a day or so then definitely do that and uh, don't take your chances 
So from there, we uh, get up into Fitzhugh Sound. Uh, really cool, beautiful area in there. It's known to have a lot of humpback whales in there. So keep your eyes open in there. We definitely saw our fair share and had a few put on a really cool show for us doing some tail slapping and such. Uh, there's also a lot of places that if you do need to duck out of the weather that you can. Uh, one of the more popular ones, I guess, is Hakai Pass. Um, we didn't go in there, didn't. Need, but uh, I've seen videos and pictures of the beaches in there and uh, absolutely stunning. So definitely somewhere to consider as an anchorage, whether you just want to stop there or if you just need to get out of some weather. Another thing through there is Rivers Inlet. So that's a world famous salmon fishing location. Uh, and I stopped for a little bit on the way home to fish for an hour or so. And uh, we caught two coho and a pink in that hour. And they were really nice sized fish. And I can see why it's a well known place for fishing. Uh, it'd be really cool to spend a few days just fishing there. So definitely worthwhile uh, for any fishermen out there. It's definitely a place you want to put on your list. So from there you get up into Denny Island where uh, Bella Bella and Shearwater are located. So we stopped at, for fuel in Shearwater both ways and uh, the fuel dock there you want to keep in mind I thought prices were going to be higher than Vancouver Island but actually um, Shearwater was cheaper than Maple Bay and a couple other marinas so I was very shocked by that thinking that with Bella Bella and Shearwater being you know more remote that uh, you would have a higher fuel price so if you have the chance maybe call ahead see where they're at you can plan accordingly on the way south we spent one night in Shearwater and uh, the dock there was really great as well there's a convenience store and restaurant just up from the dock and there's public washrooms there as well there's also a cool short little hike to a world war ii bomb shelter so it was worth checking out we all had a great time seeing that a uh, little throwback in history there so yeah Shearwater, really good place and bella bella they have a lot of services the bridge view also has a shop there i believe now as well so there are some uh if you need some things fixed uh, you can always use that as a location if need be so, so from Shearwater, we're gonna head up to Bishop Bay. This was 175 nautical miles. You're gonna be heading up through Finlandson and Ptolemy channels. You're really in the inside passage at this point. So they're long, narrow channels. Uh, some people find them can be a grind at times. Uh, I really enjoy going through there. One of the communities you're gonna pass by is Clem 2. Uh, they have a fuel dock available there as well. There is a grocery store. But just because of the remoteness, keep in mind your prices are going to be higher. Pretty friendly community as well. So uh, I know people do stop in there as well. BC Ferries is also one of their stops. So Bishop Bay Hot Springs itself, it's one of my family's favorite spots to go to. It's a really cool little spot. The really awesome uh, facilities for the hot springs itself. There's a dock there that the provincial parks maintain. Uh, there's room for about six vessels my size to tie up uh, if you uh, push it around properly. Uh, I've also seen oftentimes people are willing to let you raft up to them when it gets busy in the summer because uh, it definitely does get busy so you want to keep that in mind but most people are pretty friendly about rafting together uh, so everyone has a spot on the dock and can enjoy the hot springs. There's also I believe three mooring boys that are just outside from the dock and they ask that vessels over 30 feet use those so that you can get as many boats on the dock as possible. Um, there's an outhouse there as well. There's also some tenting pads. I believe there's three of those as well uh, to set up a tent and you'll overlook the bay itself. So absolutely gorgeous spot. We try to get there every single year at least once and we've done trips with friends and uh, it's always a good time. Everyone always has a blast. The kids will be jumping in the ocean to the hot springs and back and forth and just running around and having a great time. So definitely a must hit place uh, if you're going past this area. Um, definitely worth the stay if you get a chance. So from Bishop Bay we get back to my home of Prince Rupert. This is 110 nautical miles and you're going through the Grenville Channel uh, also known as the Grenville grind for some of those out there. Uh, you pass by Hartley Bay. Hartley Bay does have a fuel dock, but you're going to want to check to see if they're open or if they have fuel available. The, sometimes they're closed and sometimes they do run out of fuel, so keep that in mind uh, if you're planning your route and your fuel stops accordingly. Uh, like I say, the Grenville Channel, it's very long and skinny. You'll see some traffic between you know, Prince Rupert, Alaska and Vancouver Island going through this way. Um, BC Ferries uses it. A lot of 
barges and pleasure craft use it as well. Uh, so there's a pretty steady flow of traffic through there and a lot of times it's sheltered, but you can get a pretty good afternoon chop, we find, heading north, just the way the winds are going in that. So keep an eye out for that. But overall, usually a very, very sheltered uh, channel to be going through. So now we get into Prince Rupert. We are the hub of the North Coast, I guess you'd call it. Uh, big marine industry base here. Uh, and with that, so there's a lot of marine-based services available. Uh, here in town, we have a few marinas as well. So we have the Cow Bay Marina, as well as the Prince Rupert Yacht Club. Uh, if you are coming up this way and wanting to spend a night or two, I would recommend booking ahead because I know both of those places can fill up quite quickly. So keep that in mind. Uh, we also have multiple grocery stores uh, and we also have, you know, Walmart. Uh, so other things that you might need to pick up that way. We have a couple fishing supply stores in Seasport and Pacific Net and Twine uh, that aren't too far from the docks. Uh, there's also a few uh, Seasport. Seasport also offers some boat repairs uh, and, you know, they sell boat parts and all that kind of stuff. Bridgery Marine also has that. So there's definitely a lot of services you can uh, get here in Prince Rupert. Uh, also Canada Customs is here. So if you're coming from Alaska, this is probably where you're gonna be checking in uh, so you can get your clearance to be in Canada legally. So that is Vancouver Island up to Prince Rupert along the Inside Passage. Uh, the next part in part two for next week, we are going to cover from Prince Rupert to Juneau. Uh, and that was the summer of 2022 for us. Uh, and I'll also be going through the ways I check weather and forecast and that for my planning my trips. So thanks for joining. I hope this was uh, something you were able to learn a few things from. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave in the comments down below. And if there's anything that I was incorrect about or you'd like to pass along yourself, also please comment that down below because I'm always wanting to learn for myself. So thanks for joining.